Lin here. Welcome to another episode. Let's put down a floating floor. So a floating floor is something I've done in my own renovation and I don't think James or Sam have a lot of experience with them so I'm kind of the point man on this one. Which is kind of cool. This is one of Sam's renovations so he wants us to put this floating floor down through the kitchen and into the laundry and toilet. The first step is getting this underlay down. It's just sort of a, a little foam underlay and also waterproofs it a little bit. And then while James is doing the rest of that, I'm going to start putting the walls down. for us the skirtings aren't on yet but we need to undercut all the kitchen joinery so that we can get the flooring underneath it and also all the door jams and architraves. no James in today so it's just me to finish this off we broke the back of it yesterday so hopefully today I can finish this off trim around the edges which Sam got for me earlier right first things first we put a skirting at each end and then we run our trim from one end to the other and mark that and that way it'll sit nicely between the two My circular saw at the lower speed, so anyway, I'll show you this. That's low speed, it's in Japanese, which doesn't help. That's high speed. We're doing, we're basically cutting metal or any fine trim work, run it at a lower speed, which reduces the tear out. This is how our trim will fit. So the skirting will go on here, part up against the wall. And then same at the other end, and that way your trim has a nice clean line straight across there. Rather than having it in there, and then to me that doesn't look right because you've got to step in. I don't know, what do you guys think? Here we have it, we have the end result. Just as well I have these clinch nails left in my belt because it pulls it right down and holds it in place. My camera ran out of storage halfway through doing this, but I got it in. It was real tricky, it took about four attempts to actually get it the right size and to check underneath the doors enough. And um, then getting it in and getting this in was a prick. Uh, but it is done. Must be time for another pro tip. 
struggling to get your hinge pins back in. Keep the chisel. That way, you avoid scraping up the walls. So the idea is that the floor can expand and contract this way and stay within that groove. Next step is getting the underlay down. Now the underlay doesn't need to go over that little piece of drum, it just sits next to it. And it just gets cut roughly in shape. It doesn't need to be stapled down, but sometimes stapling down can make it a bit easier. So I've measured the width and taking into account the expansion gap, that would leave me with a tiny ripping about less than half a board, which I think looks pretty rubbish. So what I'm going to do is rip the first board to uh, 1.3mm and then the last board should be about 1.3mm as well, so it'll look pretty good. Then I'm going to first four rows are done. Uh, there was a bit of an issue with me trying to establish a pattern that actually worked because it's just under two boards long, so trying to get it where the joins don't repeat, but they were also far enough apart, it was a little bit tricky, but I think it's worked. All right, let's give this a try. Last piece of flooring.